Hey guys, it's Greg Schenkel from Frontline Leadership Systems and I want to talk today about safety culture, especially in light of what happened recently with Amtrak. Um, in case you were focused more on the football, on Super Bowl Sunday very early in the morning, an Amtrak train uh, derailed onto a CSX railroad siding and basically crashed into a parked train there at 50 miles an hour. The engineer died along with the conductor. So of course, we know that no manager ever wants to see that. But I do want to investigate how safety culture could be contributing to ongoing problems. If you recall back in December, there was a commuter rail derailment uh, out in Washington State because the driver didn't see the sign showing to slow down to 30 miles per hour. Three people died in that accident. Now again, let's not focus only on Amtrak, let's focus on the safety culture in your organization. <clears throat> First of all, you should know that there is no way to simply use procedures and compliance to create a safety culture. It's important, but it isn't the thing that drives people's decision making on a day-to-day -day basis. And so even system solutions like positive train control, which everyone is raving about, is not guaranteed to avoid accidents. It's simply another safety measure. I want to talk about a, a, a customer of ours where they had two sites doing almost exactly the same kind of work. One site had no lost time accidents in a two year period. The other site had accidents happening two or three times a year. So when I visited both sites, I was doing training at both sites. In the site that had a stellar safety record, what I noticed is that management's conversation always started with safety. Not just the usual, here's where the exits are in the meeting room, but actually talking about hazards, issues, concerns, what kinds of things could be done to improve safety. Even the most senior manager at that location kept safety at the top of his agenda. And it showed throughout the organization. They even had safety champions, which were hourly workers that would talk to other hourly workers about any safety concerns, which of course kept safety at the top of the mind. Now that's important because if you think about it, most safety accidents, incidents, near misses, they don't happen because someone consciously decides to break the safety rules. They happen at an unconscious level and that's why it's important that the culture of the business really support a safety culture. Now in the other location that had a terrible safety record, um, they really focused on their production numbers. So management always focused on production, production, production. And it kind of sent the message that said, even if you have to cut a couple of corners, make sure you hit your production numbers. And of course, that isn't going to create a safety culture. So what ended up happening is that uh, location ended up having these draconian safety things, zero tolerance, people were getting fired. That still didn't improve the safety record. It only really turned around when management decided to make safety a priority in terms of its conversations because that sent a message throughout the organization that safety comes first. Um, let me share with you again that safety culture is not a, a compliance thing. You cannot checklist your way to safety. Um, instead, you want to build a safety culture through leadership behaviors and actions. So I've got three tips to help drive a safety culture down through the managers, the frontline supervisors, but even down to the frontline workers themselves. First of all, of course, at the management level and at the supervisory level, you want to keep safety as the number one agenda item and not because of compliance, but because you actually care about people. So you want to talk about safety, talk about safety actions, any inch issues or incidents or hazards and get them corrected right away. Secondly is realize that safety conversations can't just be between leaders and workers, they need to be between the workers themselves. So in our safety leadership program that we did at that great safety culture site, um, we taught workers how to confront one another when there was a safety issue or concern. And you can imagine workers don't like it when other workers tell them that they're doing something wrong or different. So we help them through that, how they should be persistent and consistent in, in talking about safety with one another. And the last tip I want to leave you with is that again, checklists and procedures and even system solutions, while and a crucial and important part will never replace leadership in terms of creating a safety culture. So by all means, develop checklists, look at your procedures, but I've seen some uh, sites that overdo it from a compliance standpoint, only to discover it really doesn't influence behaviors as much as consistent leadership messages do. So again, this is Greg Schenkel from Frontline Leadership Systems. Of course, if we can be of help in training your frontline supervisors and managers, or in doing safety leadership training for them or the frontline workers, please visit us online at frontlineleadership.com and connect with me here on LinkedIn because I'd love to have a conversation with you about safety. Now go out and have a safe and productive day.